Hello everyone, this is Code Pulse here, back with the second episode on how to create your own simple math interpreter in Python. So in the last episode we created the lexer, which took in our input and generated a list of tokens. For example, the 2.2 in our input here has created this number token with the value of 2.2. So now we no longer have to work on a character level and instead we can work on a token level, which is going to make things much easier. So in this episode we are going to be creating the parser which looks at this sequence of tokens and figures out what the program is supposed to do. The way this is going to work is the parser is going to build up a tree of what's supposed to happen. So in this example we have 1 plus 2 multiplied by 3 and it will build up this tree defining the operations of the program. So at the root of our tree we have an add operation and this means that we want the left node and the right node to be added together. So the left node is the number 1 which corresponds to our input correctly. And in the case of the right node we need to perform another multiply operation first. This is because we have 2 multiplied by 3 and multiply has greater precedence than plus and therefore this uh, expression needs to be evaluated first. So we want to multiply the number 2 and the number 3 and then with this result we can then add it to 1. If we now add parentheses around the plus operation then this operation needs to be evaluated first. And we need to build our parser to update this tree accordingly. So the multiply operation needs to complete this add operation before it can multiply the two numbers together. And therefore the add operation of 1 and 2 gets evaluated first. Now we'll look at the grammar rules for building this tree. So each rule in our parser is going to be looking for a different sequence of tokens. For example, the factor rule in orange is just going to look for a number token. The next rule we are going to have is a term, which is shown in white. The term is looking for the multiply and divide operations which take the most precedence. To do this, it is going to look for a factor, followed by a multiply or divide token, and then followed by another factor. So you can actually see we are using the rules as building blocks and using them inside other rules. The final rule is going to be an expression which is shown in blue. The expression rule is looking for the plus and minus operations which take the least precedence. This time we want to look for a term followed by a plus or minus operator and then followed by another term. So if we have a plus operation and a multiply operation, our expression rule is looking for two terms to add together. And because our term is looking for a multiply or divide operation, this operation will have to happen first before it can get added to the other term. So the multiply operation will come from the term rule, and then the add operation will come from the expression rule, which is adding two terms. So you can see how the parser will build up a tree with the correct order of operations. And I also want to make it clear that each expression or term can have zero or more operators. So in this case we only have a single multiply operation here, but we might have another divide operation afterwards. And in this term we don't actually have any multiply or divide operation, so we're just looking for a single factor. So we will be writing the code for the parser in this video, and in the next video we will be creating the interpreter, which traverses the tree and actually executes the appropriate code. So if there is an add operation, then it will actually add the two numbers together. So let's get started with the code. So I'm back in Visual Studio Code and we're going to start by creating a new nodes.py file for defining all our different node types. Firstly, we need to remember to import data class so that we can use it for our types. And we'll start with the simplest node and that is the number node. And really the only thing we need to store is the value of the number, so that's going to be a float. We'll also create a representation method, which will just return the value as a string. Next, we have a different node for all the different operations, so we will begin with the add node. And the add node is for adding two nodes together, so we'll have node A for the first node and node B for the second node. For the representation of this node, we're just going to have a string showing the value of node A plus the value of node B surrounded in parentheses. Now we have the subtract node, so we can just copy and paste the add node as it's almost identical. We'll just rename this to subtract node. And we're once again subtracting two nodes, but this time for the representation we are going to put in a minus here instead. And we can now move on and do the same thing for the multiply node. And change this to a multiply. And then finally the divide node. And change this to a divide symbol. 
We'll come back to the nodes later as we have a couple of more we need to add but for now we're just going to start with what we have here. We'll move on to creating the parser which is in parser underscore dot py. The reason I have an underscore at the end of the file name is because there is a python built in called parser and we just want to avoid any conflicts with the same name. So our parser is going to be transforming our tokens into nodes. So we are going to need access to the token types for checking the types of the tokens. And we are also going to need to of course import our node types. So we can now create our parser class and in the initialize method we are going to take in the tokens that we will be parsing. We will just assign that to self.token so that we have access to the tokens throughout the parsing process. And we are also going to ensure that the tokens is in an iterator form. And you might have noticed that this is quite similar to the lexer. And we also need an advance method to advance to the first token so we can define that. And in here we can assign the current token method to the next token in self.tokens. We also need to wrap this in a try except block um, so we can catch the stop iteration exception. So this means we have reached the end of the list of tokens and so we'll just assign current token to none instead. We can now define the parse method which is the entry point into the parser. And as we've described earlier the outermost rule is going to be the expression rule and what we'll do is we'll put that in its own uh, expression method. And this will return a node and we can assign that to result and we can go ahead and return that result. So each rule that we have described will be in its very own method. Before we do this we're just going to add in a safety check and check if the current token is none. This means that there are no tokens and the user hasn't inputted anything and in this case we can just return none so we're not going to return back any node. After the expression rule we're just going to check if the current token is not equal to none in which case this means that there are more tokens that need to be processed and for some reason they haven't been processed and this is caused by invalid syntax and invalid sequence of tokens that the expression rule did not understand and did not uh, process. So what we want to just do here is raise an error. So we'll create a raise error method to do this. So we'll just use python's raise keyword and we'll raise an exception with the message invalid syntax. So now we can actually get started on defining the expression rule. So we will create that method. And as we said, we want to look for the plus and minus operations of two terms. So we can call self.term to look for a term. And of course, we haven't defined that rule yet, so we'll be doing that later. And we can assign the result just to a result variable. Now we want to look for zero or more plus or minus operators. So this means we'll be looking for the plus or minus tokens. So we'll create a loop while the current token is not equal to none. And the current token type is a plus token type or a minus token type. So if we are coming across a plus operator, then we must create an add node. So the first node that we are adding in this add node is the result we had here earlier from the first term. So we can just put that in here. And the second node is going to be another term coming after the plus token. We also need to make sure we advance past this plus token. And what we'll do is we'll reassign our result variable to this add node. For the minus operator, we have almost the exact same thing. So we're just looking for a minus token. We must advance past that token. And this time we are creating a subtract node. So now we just must not forget to return this result at the end of the function. Now we can write the code for the term method and I'm just going to do some copy and pasting because really it's very similar to the expression method. So we'll call this rule term. This time we are going to be looking for two factors instead. So we'll change that to the factor rule. And the two operators we will be looking for is a multiply or a divide. And all we have to do is change this to a multiply node and change this to a divide node. So that's it for the term, and the final rule we have is the factor. So in this rule, we want to look for a number, so we'll check if the current token type is equal to a number. So this is really quite simple, we just need to advance, and then we can return a number node. And the value of the number is just going to be the value of the token. If for some reason we didn't come across a number, so for example we typed in two multiply operators, which doesn't make any sense, we want to just raise a syntax error. 
We can now come into main.py and create our parser and pass in the tokens. And we'll call parser.parse and we can just assign that result to the tree variable. So we'll print out the tree and see what happens. And don't forget we need to import the parser at the top of the file. So we can go ahead and run the program. And if we type in something simple such as 5 plus 6, it generates a very simple tree. So we just have an add node. And the left node is the number node with the value of 5. And the right node is the number node with the value of 6. If you type in something a slight bit more complicated, such as 5 plus 6 multiplied by 7, as you can see we have this multiply node which must be evaluated first before it can be added inside the add node. So the order of operations is working perfectly. So that's nearly it, there are still two small little features we are missing. So the first is unary operators such as minus 5, and this is when we put a plus or a minus before a number. The unary operations take the most priority, so in this case we need the negative variant of 5 before we add it to 6. So we'll come back into nodes.py and define two more nodes for those unary operations. So the first will be the plus node. So this is just if you put a plus before a number, which actually doesn't really do anything, but we still need to have it here. So we just need a field for the node we are operating on. And in the representation method, we'll just create a string with a plus before the node. Uh, surrounded in parentheses. So we'll copy and paste this for the minus unary operation. So we've got a minus node and in the representation method we'll just put a minus here instead. So we can now update the factor rule inside the parser to add support for this and the factor rule takes the highest precedence. So previously here we just allowed a number and now we want to allow um, plus or minus tokens before that number. So we'll check if the token type is instead a plus token, in which case we can advance and just return a plus node. And what we'll do is recursively look for another factor rule for the value of this plus node. So this will come back around and look for another factor and once again check for a number. And if you have multiple plus or minus tokens before the number, then it will just keep creating those plus or minus nodes. So we can duplicate this for the minus token. And in this case, we just look for a minus node. So if we run the program again, we can see this in action. So if we put in minus 5, we now have our minus node. And we can put in as many minuses as we want. And as you can see, the minus takes the most precedence. So the minus operation happens before it is added to the other um, number. So the final feature we are missing is the ability to put in parentheses to change the order of operations. And this is actually quite simple. So we want to be able to do something like this. And the plus operation should be evaluated first. We could also do, for example, something like this, where the result of whatever is inside the parentheses is turned negative. So we want the operations inside the parentheses to take the most precedence and be evaluated first. So we can once again add this in in the factor rule. So instead of just looking for number plus and minus tokens, we'll also look for a left parentheses. And we must change this one here to an elif. So we need to remember to advance past that token. And inside our parentheses, we just want to look for a brand new expression. So we look for the expression rule and we'll assign that to result. After the expression, we are expecting the token type to be a right parentheses. So if it isn't a right parentheses, we'll just raise an error. So we can just advance past this right parentheses and then return the result. So if we run our program and we now do the add operation in parentheses, as you can see, we have this add node, which must be evaluated first before it can be multiplied inside the multiply node. Similarly, we can negate an entire expression. So by using the parentheses, the add operation needs to be evaluated first before it is negated. So that is going to mark the end of the second episode on how to create your own simple math interpreter in Python. In the next episode, we will be writing the interpreter to evaluate our tree, and that will be the interpreter finished and working. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, Helsfair, Hesvik, Lizette, and Daniel Munch. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment if you have any problems or questions, and I'll be sure to reply to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.